Math 230, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vasta, and in this lecture we are covering section 5.2, Bridge Problems. And we're going to visit the bridges of Konigsberg, but before we do that, let's look at the puzzle. What do these letters have in common? There's some letters there. Why can't we put B, C, or D? You know, why can't you put the other letters on this list? So that is your puzzle for this lecture. Let's talk about bridge problems. Okay. Back in the day, we have Konigsberg. This happens in the 18th century. And Konigsberg was built on or off of a river. And this river kind of separated here and did this sort of deal. And what the people did is they built bridges. So those gray things are the bridges, and there's seven of them. So we have seven bridges. Now this is problem number one. And before we, we read it, we have the townspeople. Some of them like to take walks about the town and cross the bridges. On Sundays they like to do that. So after a while, perhaps the people started saying, hey, can we take a walk that starts at a location, travels across all the bridges only once, and end at the the same location. So that's what they like to do. I mean, come on, this is the 18th century. There's no internet. There's no television. That's what you did for fun. So let's just play the role of the people. Let's say, let's represent the people that are right here. Let's meet at Bob's house. Okay, so we cross this bridge and then we cross this bridge and we cross that bridge and we have to we want to um stop right there we cross this bridge cross this bridge cross that bridge now you're stuck there because we've already gone across those bridges and so you're done and there's two bad things you didn't end where you start it and you didn't use this bridge over here so the people would go oh that was fun let's get together next sunday and we'll we'll start over here and they would try to do it but what happened is they couldn't quite figure out how to do this problem you know, and they would just meet at someone's house or meet at a certain area and just start walking and they could not figure it out. So what did they do? They brought this problem to a Swiss mathematician. His name, Leonard Euler. And we've heard that name before, Euler. And Euler solved the problem in 1736 that is the, the 18th century. Um, and when he solved that problem, it gave birth to a whole branch of math called graph theory. So how did Euler solve this problem? That's what we're going to look at now. So let me get a pen here. And this is what Euler did. He says, look what we're going to do. Maybe I'll get a darker pen. I think I'll get green. So for each of the um, places where you can meet, we're going to put 
a dot. So we have one there. We have one there. We have one there. And then I guess this is an area as well. Okay, so we have four dots, or we can call them four vertices. We learned that in 5.1. Then what Euler does is he goes ahead and he connects two vertices together if there's a bridge. So he uses an edge. And each bridge represents an edge. And so there are seven bridges. Therefore, there will be seven edges. There it is. Now, the question is, can you or can all the edges be traced with a pencil only once without lifting the pencil off the paper and your start point is your end point. Another way of stating that is, is this green graph an Euler circuit? So that's what we want to get at. Euler circuit. And so I'm going to go ahead and take out the red pen and we're going to label the vertices like we did in 5.1. This vertex gets a label of 3. This vertex gets a label of 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You might already know the answer. And then up here we put a 3. So is it an Euler circuit? The answer is no. So was it possible to start at a location, travel across all the bridges only once and end at the same location? The answer is no. In fact, this green graph is not even traversable. So it's pretty unsatisfying in terms of what we've been doing in 5.1. This graph is actually pretty famous. It's, it's been on postal stamps. Sometimes they would even put Euler on a, a postage stamp. And what this graph kind of condenses to is something that looks like this. They don't even have the river and the land. They just have something that looks like this because this is the graph that started off graph theory. And you can see it looks just like this. And we can label this 3, 5, 3, and a 3. So that is the deal. The Bridges of Konigsberg. A little history. I'm terrible at history, but I went ahead and tried it anyway. Um, but I do like the story. So I might not be able to tell the story like nicely, but that was the story. The story is even cooler because the next um, thing that happened after a while is they built a bridge. And they probably built the bridge because the city was getting bigger and guess what, they put the bridge right there. Now, does that change the answer from no to yes? No, oh, it's, it's still not going to be an Euler circuit because this one would change to a 6 and this one would change to a 4, but those guys would still be odd. But when they added that 8th bridge, it did make the graph traversable, and that would have been satisfying to some of the townspeople of Konigsberg. So that is the bridges of Konigsberg. <laughs> the pen's rolling. And we are now going to do some bridge problems. So let's see if I can find the piece of paper. This is a bit of a short section, and 5.3 will also be a short section. So we're going to actually ask the same types of questions. But instead of um, going off of a river, I'm going to um, make some bridges and some islands. And that's what we're going to do. 
So let's go ahead and do these problems. Each diagram consists of islands, so here's four islands here, and bridges, those are the lines. Is it possible to take a walk that starts at one island, crosses each bridge exactly once, and ends up at the starting point? Follow-up question. If not, what is the minimum number of bridges you must build to make it possible? Okay, so let's see if we can do this problem. Um, now, the bridges are still edges, like it was with the bridges of Konigsberg. The islands are going to be vertices. So I'll take out this pen, you can see this graph. This is just a big vertex here. And how many edges are coming out of this vertex? Looks like two. And then this vertex, which is an island here, has four edges. The vertex up here has two. And the vertex over here, two. So you this right here has no odd vertices. We'll write that down. No odd vertices, which makes it an Euler circuit. And the answer to this question, is it possible to do this? The answer is yes. Where do you start? Anywhere you want to. I'm going to start on the middle island. I'm going to do the upper triangle and then come down there and then go back to the middle island. So when the answer is yes, you can start on any island and you can get the job done. So that's how you do your homework. You just look at these islands and bridges as, as a graph and do what you did in 5.1. But this one this question here is asking, is it an Euler circuit, but sort of in disguise. I'm not going to change it on the test and go and change it where I'm asking if these things are traversable. No, these island and bridge problems will always, in this class, I'll always ask that it in this way where you're looking to see if it's an Euler circuit. So why don't we go ahead and do the next one. You can pause the video and see if you can do the next one. Okay, so here it goes. This vertex here has one, two, three, four, five. Now you already know the answer because you have an odd vertex. The answer is no, this is not an Euler circuit and no, you cannot take a walk that starts at one island and crosses each bridge exactly once and ends at the starting point. But let's continue. This island has three bridges touching it. And then over here, one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. So we know the answer to this first question is no. I'm not going to write out the other part. Um, there are two odd vertices. We can write that out if you want, and, and it's not an Euler circuit. So the answer is no. Now the follow-up question, which we didn't have to do on problem two because the answer was yes. But this says, if not, what is the minimum number of bridges you must build to make it possible? Okay, I mean, we could... Build, we can add 10 bridges to this, but the minimum number of bridges to make this possible is to add another bridge right there, which would change this 3 into a 4 and this 5 into a 6. And so the minimum number of bridges to add is 1. And that completes these bridge problems. Let's go back to the puzzle, see if we could answer this. What do these letters have in common? And I do understand a lot of people when they're um, watching these videos, you, you figure it out. So um, I'm just showing the answer for the people who did not figure this out. Well, let's take a look at these. Let's take a look at U. Let's take a look at T. And M. So what am I doing? I'm putting a vertical line in there and this vertical line 
is acting as a mirror. What you see on the left is mirrored through that line and you see it on the right. And so all these letters, these are the only letters that have vertical line symmetry. We saw vertical line symmetry in this class and um, that happened to be Pascal's triangle where you put a vertical line through it and what you see on the left is the same thing that you see on the right. The letter C and B and all the other letters you do not see up there, the capital letters, they do not have vertical line symmetry. So this completes 5.2. Do your homework, it shouldn't take that long. Have a good day.